Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is another Ask That. My name is Clark Sell, and today we're going to talk about assistance. Not the human kind, though. A different kind. And with that, I have with me Fazio. Fazio, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, before we start talking about getting some assistance, I'm just going to keep playing up this whole uh, Why don't you tell everybody who you are? So my name is Michael Fazio. Um, I'm a senior software engineer over at Skyline Technologies up in the general Milwaukee area. And so focused over here in kind of the web and mobile spaces. And so just helping clients with a lot of different types of custom software, you know, whatever that may mean. Uh, and so relevant to today's discussion, in the last couple of years, I've gotten into different types of AI assistance. AI has always been something I'm kind of interested in, yeah. kind of like what's what's happened with it. And the amount it's blown up in the last few years is just amazing. So it's been kind of cool to see everything evolve and see what's out there now. Yeah, so let's, let's put a little bit of a context around the assistance. In particular, we're talking about Alexa. Oops, I'm going to have to turn her off. Um, Alexa... The Google, what's a Google Home, Cortana? Google Assistant, yeah. What are there, I mean, those are the big three. Are there others on the market that play into this conversation? I guess Surrey, if we're talking about phones, we have Surrey. Yeah. And okay, Google. I mean, those those are the main four, really. I mean, I feel like Alexa and Google are more into the kind of the home space. Home. You know, Google Assistant and Siri on phones. Cortana is trying to get into different areas, but I feel like Microsoft's had trouble really getting a lot of traction. Yeah. So it's a little late to the party. Yeah. And you know, so there's, they're all kind of doing the same thing. They all have their pluses and minuses. And I feel like they're, they're really, they're kind of in the general space, but I feel like they're all a little bit different in kind of what they do yeah. and how they're utilized. But yeah, those, those are the main ones. So let, let's let's dive. I mean, we're going to dive into this conversation, and it would be interesting to see where we go with it. I I'm somebody who's had an Alexa for a long time. I, I don't use uh, Surrey on my phone or on my laptop. I mean, I guess I guess at times if I'm driving, I want to say take me home or some some crazy stuff. But um, not somebody who uses it, you know, to talk through your i i AirPods or any of that kind of stuff. Now. I'll say that Alexa has become more and more as a stable creature in the house Mm -hmm. Um, that started as music and it's now made its way into controlling some of the IOT space. So being able to see our doorbell and uh, turn the heat up and down and we use it for, I'd say, basic stuff, Um, you know, the how many cups in a gallon, whatever. Yep cooking type stuff where I don't want to get my hands dirty. I have my, my naivety assumes that everybody is on the same path as me. Is that a true, is that a true sense of, of how people start these things start integrating into their house? I think more so now, because I think people have a better understanding of what they are, what they're used for, and they don't seem quite as weird. I mean, I, I think when you looked a couple of years ago and you'd have the, the iPhone commercials and you'd have people talking to Siri yeah. and you look at it and you go, this is weird. Like, what are they, what are they like, who does this? Yeah. You know, okay, you have some celebrity you're paying to do this, but like nobody talks to their phone. Yeah. And now it's evolved into like, people know what these are. They know the assistants. They, they know a little bit more what you can do. I mean, my example always is I did a presentation last spring about the Google Home. It had just come out a couple months before, and it was like, hey, guys, here's a Google Home. This is what it looks like. No, it's not an air freshener. I mean, <laughs> and just kind of giving that base level of here's what's going on and here's what it is. You know, people had seen the the Echo devices a little bit. I think there were like two available, and this was yeah. spring of 2017. I go and do this now, and it's, okay, well, here's here's the Echo. Here's the Google Home. Here's how they compare. Where's the Invoke fit in? Uh, does, is the HomePod actually useful? Like, <laughs> it's it's kind of gone to that next nope. step of people. <laughs> I wasn't going to say it, but uh, no, no, it's kind of gone to the next step of what do people want? And how do you how do you utilize it instead of, is this a real thing? Like, what's what's going on with it? So it's been this huge change in how how people view these devices in the past. 
you know, two years, not even. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm certainly not in the camp of it's assisting me, if you will. Like, I feel like there's a long way to go before it's doing more smart things. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like it's solving some simple problems that are just me being fat and lazy. Like, I could just walk over to the thermostat and turn the dial, but it's easy to tell it. But I could do it from my phone, too. So yeah. like, it's not. It's fun, though, to say it. It's fun to say, hey, turn the temperature to this. It, yeah, there's still a novelty to it, I think. There totally is. And and I think the 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 inroad for us was certainly music. Like mm -hmm. it it was we we play a lot of music. It's a good ambient fill. Um and that was nice. Um and yep. it, it still continues to be nice. We we it, the thing is probably always playing music. Yep. Um but the uh, assistant piece of it is just little stuff yeah i mean it's, it's nothing critical i'm i'm you know people ask me they're like okay we should, you know i probably need to have one of these i'm like no i mean it's nothing that is earth shattering per se but it's parts that are handy and one thing that kind of taught us about how much we actually do use it is when we go someplace and we stay over at like my parents or something and we don't have one in the bedroom or wherever we are it's kind of like hey goop oh right can't do that like, we just get so ingrained mm -hmm. about having that quick, you know, quick thing we can ask and sure. get a response from, whether sure. it's just checking the weather or, like you said, music-wise, I think that's one of the, the best things we have. Because yeah. we've got – my current setup right now is I have a Google Home in our kitchen, in my office, in our living room, which is – the kitchen and living room are connected in an open space. A We've got a mini down in my wife's office in – Upstairs in our bedroom, we have a mini. And then I have an Echo Dot in my office as well. And we can sync all of those up to play music in all the different rooms all together. Or we have by default, hey, music's playing throughout the main level. It's in the living room. It's in the kitchen. It's all playing together. And then we get to the point where we're just – we're kind of used to it. Like my daughter, who's four, knows, okay, I can go here and I can say, you know, hey, Google, yeah. play The Little Mermaid. Yeah. And boom, music starts playing. She's also figured out Netflix, which is not ideal, but yeah. I mean, it's just, it's something that ends up being really handy and you get used to really, really fast. Yeah. How, how different is the Google assistant versus Alexa? I mean, uh, from an outside, I take them as almost feature parody, which again, yeah. probably naive, but you know, they are silly cylinder with speaker and mic that yep. one can talk to. Is there, is there really any differentiating features between these platforms? I mean, I don't see it as being anything huge. I mean, they all have their own pieces that they, well, things they can do. It's a lot of very similar features. One of the big things with, not surprisingly, the, the Google devices is that it ties in well to Google Calendar and it does a really good job handling searching because it's Google. It does a really good job handling different things with maps and you can send from your device to your maps app on your phone, for example. But I mean, feature wise, they they are really similar in a lot of ways. And I feel like the biggest thing is just personal preference. We like the Google devices better because we have Google Play Music. You yeah. can't play that on the Echo devices. If you have Spotify, either one works. Yeah. So and I've seen some different trials that have been done. It seems like generally Google does the best job of answering questions. The Alexa devices are pretty close by. Cortana's down some, Siri's down farther. Like that's kind of the general trend. But they are actually very, very similar in what they're doing. Now I'm intrigued to see what happens in the next year or two because I feel like there's been a little bit of a, a branching off of how they're handling these devices. I feel like Alexa's, you know, those are looking more in general assistance, but also there's a little bit of that shopping part. And just for example, the new Echo Dot they came up with is intended for kids. And it's yeah. got constraints on it and all that. I didn't. While the didn't home devices get are that. I really didn't get that. I didn't like. I I don't know. Like I I just I didn't get it. I don't I don't see the point. <laughs> I mean, I guess because you've got those... them everywhere else. Like, what am I? Yeah. Like the the lowest common denominator. Like only use it here. To your to your point, where it becomes a thing that you use all the time. Like you're not going to tell your kid to go run up and. You know, you got to go talk to this dot because it's the kid dot, not the other yeah. dot. Like, it just, I don't know. 
I think part of the intent with that is just to say, here's something that you can have in a kid's room and you don't have to worry about what music's coming up for them, what they're maybe searching for, things like that. I mean, I haven't done a whole lot of research into the, yeah. the full feature set, but I think that's more the intent. Plus, then you can't go and shop on the device that's in their room. Yeah, so all is. of a sudden, kid ordered that's a bunch it. of things on Amazon, yeah. and you don't really realize it until you look at your email, and it's, yeah. well, when did, where did this come from? What happened? Yeah. yeah, parental controls are a dumpster fire across <laughs> all platforms. I mean, yeah. th they really are. There's no... There's really no good way. I mean, I think everyone has solved a very, very small, small piece of the parental controls, but nobody's mm -hmm. really kind of embraced what it means to be a parent in today's world. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, your, your, your kids can't have accounts until they're 13. Okay, great. Well, then we're like, you still end up, they're all using these things in school, right? Yep. So they still need an account, which becomes your account which, or, or another fake, you know, fake account. Great. That's fine. You monitor it. Fine. But then, you know, and we have things like circle and, you know, the Alexa fine, but to like, to your point, there's a giant hole. Uh, my back yep. is around. All they do got to do is walk into the other room and say, order thing. And what, like, I can't. But what do you do? Like, yeah. And, and I think, I feel like we're still trying to figure out exactly what, as a parent, like what you have to be worried about right now. Oh, totally. Because things are changing so fast. It's like, do I, do I need to be worrying about this kind of communication? Do I need to worry about things happening this way? Like, I, things are evolving so rapidly. Like, it's hard enough for us to keep track of how things work, much less how a kid is going to utilize them and how it's going to affect them. Yep. I think it's yeah, very, very I mean, tricky. There's nothing, there's nothing stopping a kid from asking Alexa about the birds and the bees and getting an answer, which, nope. and, and there's nothing to say that's a good thing or a bad thing. I, yeah. I mean, I don't know. That but I think a lot of parents want to make sure they can have a little more say in that than just, oh, I'm going to go check this myself. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. can we put, be part of this, please? Sure. Uh, it's really, I mean, just taking that example, like that's a, that's a hard one in, in the sense that. At, at least in some regards, you know that they're getting it from a source that you hopefully trust and in a mm -hmm. place where it's safe versus yeah. maybe on the bus or from somebody else. I, I don't know. But but the, the old access, school way of learning. Right. But the access to information is literally in, in, in just a shout's distance of like, yeah. hey, tell me. And well, even some of those scenarios of, okay, yeah, they'll learn about this eventually, but there's certain things I'm like, I don't think I want her knowing about some of this at all. I mean, yep. I've seen enough of the online culture. There's things I'm like, you don't need to know about this. And I wish I didn't yeah, like, yeah. Just get that away. So. Yeah. 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 YouTube's great. And it's also a dumpster fire. Like, yep. <laughs> it's just, I feel like that's a, the internet a little bit in general though. Yeah. Being yep. Wonderful and very dangerous. And I mean, I'm on Reddit. I think that's the poster child for the wonderful and awful sides of the internet. Yeah. Yeah. You know, from a, from a, from a development standpoint, kind of technical thing. And we, we live in these worlds where um, we use different things. I, I happen to have a lot of Apple stuff. Apple's got the home pod. We don't have the home pod. Uh, I, I think about my profile, my existence across these things as uh, they, they should know who I am regardless. Um, like I need you to work with the calendar service that I chose and yeah. I chose my own, right? I have my own hosted domain and my business and whatever that runs where it's hosted. I, I didn't necessarily choose a Gmail thing. So like it's got to work with that. It's got to work with my mail thing or my any list or whatever. Like I need those little things. And we do live in this time, which I'm super conscious of, of like, attention is getting one's attention and, and being part of it or being part of that cycle is hard. Uh, yeah. We're all busy. There's a lot of places to get it. So you need things that are easy. And, and I think about like, how does that conference kind of play in the things like Alexa and, and Google to surface information and to be part of people's schedules. And um, 
So then I think about the developer ecosystem or the apps because the device itself is stupid, right? I mean, let's just be clear. Like it's a mic and a speaker. Yep. That's it. So it's got to do stuff. Are we, are we at that boom like we were with the phones? Because the phone is very much uh, maybe a pre precursor to this. You know, the phone, the original iPhone didn't have a store, didn't have it. And it was dumb. It made phone calls, and I don't even know if it had e email client at the time, or at least the iPhone. But it's when the App Store kind of lit up that that became this tool beyond the imaginable. I feel like at times we're kind of there with the Alexa and Google and Cortanas of the world, but yet we don't know how to interact in that. Like it's a new paradigm that's going to take a bit to yep. get to. Is that is that a a legit statement? Are we are yeah. we at that cusp? Are is is there really a platform there to be programming to, or or do we really need to reimagine our existence on these devices? I mean, I feel like it can kind of be both. Where it's you know we've got something out there that can be usable, that can be something that is part of people's day to day. Um, and one thing I know that in particular Google's been doing is when they make changes for the home, it's the assistant, which is also in your phone and it's expanding out to so many other devices. And we end up with a situation where it's not just, okay, here's this item in the corner. That's where we start. But then we continue on to, you know, smart everything. And those are getting smarter and smarter and smarter. So it's, it's a situation where, yeah, we've got something here. We can go ahead and we can integrate with it. We can customize it, but, not as much as we'd like yet. Sure. So it's like we've, we've got this part where, yeah, it's being useful, but there's so much more that can happen. I would say like distant future. Well, it's probably not that distant anyway. Yeah, yeah. So it's got to flow with you. Is that is that part of the reason we're seeing things like Alexa in every, everywhere? I mean, who was it that announced it's going to be in the car? I don't know if it was BMW or... I feel like it was BMW is who I was thinking. Yeah. Something like that. And like... Android Auto is going to have the Google Assistant. I know there are certain makes and models of like even microwaves and ovens that we're going to have Alexa built in. I mean, it's just it's it, kind of getting to be everywhere. Right. And so when 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 that statement is said, are we talking about having like full baked like Alexa, or are we talking about there's just some voice piece to that? Is it is it really the whole deal, or is it just a, a portion of it? I mean, I would assume with a lot of these, it's. It's going to be the whole thing because, like you said, the devices are dumb. They sit there, they listen for some kind of trigger, and with Google's case, it's very simple. With Alexa, you get you know a whopping four options, yeah. and you can say, okay, do this. It listens. It sends a message back to the cloud. The cloud processes it and brings it back, and obviously oversimplification, but that's the general flow. So there's no reason these other devices can't work exactly the same way yeah. and just utilize everything that they've built up over the however many years now with these different AI assistants. Yeah. Yeah, I worry I worry in some regards that we end up like um like the first to market is great, but then you think mm -hmm. like, oh look, I've got five kitch kitchen devices. Like my, my smart knife now has Alexa in it and so does <laughs> my other my other ten things. And then you say, Hey, hey Alexa and twenty two things go off and you're like just <laughs> Just shut up, like. Yeah. Don't... Please, please. I don't need all my knives talking to me. Well, and, and it's one of those. It's like that sounds ridiculous. Well, actually, I don't know how far we are from. I mean, maybe not knives, but they yeah. mean something like that. I mean, we're in a situation right now where if I go into my kitchen and I say, "Okay, Google," it's entirely possible with two people in the room, we're gonna have four devices light up, and if I'm close enough to the stairs, the one downstairs does as well. And it's like, okay, what are we talking to? What's going on? Yeah. And trying to balance all that out. I mean, yeah, it's like, I don't know if we're hitting an overload point in a way where it's like, it's everywhere, but it's not really doing any one thing you really want. Mm -hmm. But it's also something that what's happening right now, I don't know if a lot of us saw it happening two years ago, Yeah, where it's coming, where, like, what's happened with it. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I really appreciate the fact that it enables us to, to connect our pieces together. So, and if I think about, you know, our like dining room, we've got some Sonos speakers and Sonos has an app inside. I don't know if the app is the right way, but a hook inside 
Alexa such that I can tell Alexa to play some music on the dining room and yep. you know I can stitch it together it's still a very kind of programmatic like you know have to know what pieces to kind of stitch together in the voice yep. now voice design all that being said that's a whole nother thing to learn and we actually have a pre-con on that at, at that conference this year because I think it's 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 easy to like make the thing but like designing something to interact like human interaction yeah. like whole nother ball of wax but there's still a plethora of devices that are around me that can't reach out to the cloud and I'd, I'd love to see the alexas or the googles or something be able to somehow bridge that gap of i'm not going to go buy another thousand dollar receiver for my home stereo how can we get creative and use the HDMI inputs to control that and you like bolt on something? You know, I'm not going to buy, I know we can, but you know, there just has to be more creative solutions at, at a price to light these things up than just replace everything that I have. Yep. It's and I, best gonna I, yeah, I mean, I, that's the intent I know with from both Amazon and Google with this. It's just this should be your one place you go to that is in multiple devices and can control anything you'd want. That's, I feel like that's kind of their end goal is it's integrated with everything. And here's the one place you go to to take care of it. You know, maybe, maybe there are going to be add-ons eventually where, Hey, plug this in here and it's a little pass through in your free yeah, receiver, yeah. your TV. And it knows to send signals through based on what you're trying to do. Yeah. You know, maybe, maybe something like that's coming up or, you know, again, you sit there with the situation of, Okay, do I want to buy this new one just because they added assistant right. integrations, and then I can talk to it? Yeah. So you know, there may be something coming up with it. It just it depends on what they're able to find and what they're able to to figure out with it. Yeah. But I, I know that that end goal is just, hey, this is your one place you go to. This is your one stop shop. Take care of everything. Yeah. We're, I mean, we're just kind of you know BSing right now. Like I. I um I had a conversation with my my in-laws. We ended up getting them one and mm -hmm. they were super concerned about the security of it. You know, oh, I don't want this thing sitting here listening all the time. And I said, "Okay, well that's great, but what about your cell phone or your computer or the other computer which all have mics and cameras and while you think that they're not listening, like you don't you don't know. You don't you don't really know like if your machine is hacked. Like there's nothing stopping them from turning the mic on and listening. Yep. Where, where are we in this like security privacy? I mean, obviously Google and Amazon have their kind of best interests in mind to make sure that these platforms are secure, but are we, have we opened ourselves up to something that we should be concerned about? Or have we created some opportunities that maybe we didn't have in the past? And well, I'll get to the later, uh, later after yeah. your answer. I mean, I think with the security piece, I feel like we're we're not at the level we should be. But I feel like that you could apply that to any level of tech and anything that's internet connected, from you know, from the cars to even our phones and everything like that. Now, I don't know if I necessarily worry about things like the the Echo devices or the home, these flagship devices for each of the companies. But when you look at some of these companies that are putting out smart refrigerators or smart ovens, yeah. and it's like, do I, if someone can get into my Wi-Fi, do I really trust them? Do I really trust the security that they built into this oven where odds are they don't totally understand how everything works yeah. and what's available there? Those are like, it's not necessarily these other pieces I worry about as yeah. much as what's yeah. going on. As far yeah, as like I mean, the, the it's not like you can just update your refrigerator. I mean, let, let, even it, it's a big appliance, right? It's one thing to buy yeah. a new dot. We've all, we've also seen companies who have orphaned their thing. In effect, Google is one of them. Ironically, uh, I forget what device that was here. Of what a year it was one of their ago. home uh, yeah. home things. Smart it was kind of similar things. to a yeah. It was similar to a Nest, and they're like, we have the Nest. We bought this. We're taking the tech. Now this is going right. to be dead. So, so you, you have to think of like, oh, I was in, I bought a refrigerator who slapped a Alexa in and then Samsung decided, no, I made, I went with Google and now, now the device, AKA the refrigerator that you kept for, or will have kept for 10 years or 15 years or 30 years, I guess, I don't know, 
new refrigerators actually last that long, but right, that feature could very well be obsolete in five years, and now you have thing that uh, who knows? Like, is is it a giant security hole sitting on your network? Granted, you could take it off, but yeah. But I mean, at the same time, it's like you know, if it's kicking out its own signal and it's something you can just connect to on its own. What's going to stop somebody from, oh, hey, look, here's this open piece that I just saw as I drive by the house because it's right. kicking out a signal far enough. Yeah. All of a sudden, hey, I'm just going to turn your fridge off or more so I'm going to turn your oven on. It's now yeah, at 500 yeah. degrees oh, for the yeah, whole day. Yeah. yeah, I didn't even think of it. Yeah, the inverse is even worse. Yeah. yeah. So I, mean, that's, I think that's one of the things that I'm more concerned about is these devices that are open, that don't have the property secu- proper security protocols, that don't truly understand how the communication is happening and what they need to be concerned about. It's like the echoes in homes. Yeah. They're, they're listening to what's going on. They're listening for wake words. Yes. They're picking up phrases and sending them back to the servers, but I'm, I'm no more concerned about those than I am again, like your cell phone that's in your pocket or your laptops. It's it's the same ideas. I think it's these other parts that, that at least make me more nervous. Yeah. You know, I, I hope I, I mentioned the are there new scenarios that are, are that come up. One of the things we have is a ring doorbell. And I think that it's a fantastic thing that everybody could have. Um, but I also, you know, I, I don't know what plan we pay for, but it's certainly not like, go you know, go search in time for whatever video you want. But you hope you hope that if like something uh bad happened like if my neighbor's house across the street was broken into through the front door could i call ring and say hey i think at 2 30 yesterday my neighbor's house was broken in and you may actually have footage of it can can we help like did that did that camera is there a way that we can get 2 30 to 3 30 on there and i mean I, i don't know yeah, I mean, that'd be, it'd be interesting to see how Ring treats it as, okay, this is over here. You know, do you guys have full control of the video that's being taken from the device or does Ring control it? And, you know, if you go to say, hey, this is what I thought happened, do they know you're telling the truth? Like how, what happens from a verification perspective? Yeah, that gets in the, the muddy water. I know I've seen comments before about somebody had a house broken into and they got the audio from an echo device to say, oh, it picked up something that was going on in here. Yeah. And I mean, more and more devices out there, this is going to be more common. So it's going to be very interesting to see from a legal standpoint, what do we have access to? What do we have control of? Is it ours? Can we use this? Do can we, it do we have control? Over in a court? Yeah. That was going to say, can yeah. they take it otherwise? Yeah. Yeah. Who's to distinguish? I mean, I, I guess we don't even know, right? It, you know, is it full fidelity audio? I mean, we don't know. I mean, I know. there's nothing to say that it's a not a mono, 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 monotone, monotone, mono. Could you distinguish between a TV and, you know, you you yeah. just speaking? I'm, I'm sure some wizard can, but be interesting to yeah see what the data is that's coming back yeah. and how right. clear is it? Right. Did you get falsely accused of whatever crime happened during yep. the movie? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry, the TV was on. I. But, uh, yeah, we heard yeah. gunfire. Yeah, I was I was watching right. something. It's it's ten feet this way. Right. Right. Yeah, and we we actually, funny you say that. We live next to uh, a state park, and there's during hunting season, hearing gunshots oh, yeah. is a very common thing, right? So, you could very easily mistake that for actual, like gunshots in a neighborhood. Although, yeah, they're kind of across the street, but. Um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting world. You know, like I said, like we started, like my, it's as useful as it is that it can follow me, but that then breeds a bit of like concern because now this AI thing is following me. But yep. if it's not following me, then it's, it'll only be as useful as kind of the container it's in. If that's the kitchen, right. Then it's my interaction inside of the kitchen and the things I can do in the kitchen. So. Yeah, it's, it's always that balance of like, all right, how much information do I want to give it and how much do I want it to know so it can help me and have better context? Yeah, you know, yeah. it's, it's like going back, like thinking about ads and, it's, okay, I don't know if I want them knowing all this info about me, but I don't care about this and this and this. And yeah. that's the only way they can know it coming back. Yeah, it's funny. It's funny you bring up the ads thing. I'm, I'm reminded of Gmail. I 
way back in the beginning and here's a free service to get email and oh they're going to read your email and god we can't let them do that and and oh god how long has it been now it's probably been almost 15 20 years since that gmail it's been a while hit and i feel like we're just now getting to the place where the ads are relevant it's just sad yeah but i do see through like facebook and instagram and some of these other services where the ads are actually legit. And, mm -hmm. and while I recognize that I'm not paying for those services, so I'm all right with ads being surfaced, surfaced to me. I'm all right with it because the ads that are getting surfaced actually have some meaning to me. And yeah. there's been a number of things that I've bought because I didn't know about it and it was legit. Um, that certainly has never been the case on the Gmail side, which is kind of sad. Like, yeah. They all get kind of filtered out. But then, I mean, taking that a bit further, you know, to think that something's listening to you all the time and then, it, you know, your Alexa card starts surfacing, I don't know, a, a new brand of Cheetos because you really yeah. like Cheetos. Like that's that information and then to tie that to something like, oh, your your health insurance provider is now, you know, cataloging the amount of cheetos eaten per region and you just happen to live in a highly cheeto eaten region and your health insurance changes like that's it's we laugh but that's not a that's not a far off thing that's why i'm laughing because i'm like it's not nearly as ridiculous as it sounds no like that's something they will absolutely tie together going here's these extra trends we've picked up yeah and we know this i'm pretty sure like the big box grocery stores um do sell the inventory data of what it is to the health insurance companies i i had heard heard something or read some somewhere where like jewel is doing that and so they're very hyper local to where um what foods are bought where sure. um, not that it's tied to you the consumer but it's tied to you tangentially because you bought there or maybe you live there and yep man like that's 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 messed up it's it's all those trends. It's it's we're watching a collection of people, and I've I've said this before to people. I'm like, they don't care about you as a person. They care about you as the consumer and you as a demographic, a tr you know, someone who lives in a certain area, and trends of all right. right. We get this collection of data. How do we use this? Where do we yeah. go with it? Yeah. What you know, what what can we do? And what can we find out? Whether you want them to or not. Right. What? Yeah. And some of it's good, and some of it's bad. Right. Like. Yeah. We can make sure that there's more pork rinds on the shelf because keto's a big deal, or we could choose to jack up your health insurance because we feel like keto's a bad deal. Yep. Um, or, you know, keto's the cause for grass-fed butter like completely skyrocketing in uh, you know consumption. I don't know. Sure. What's uh, what would you say is some of the coolest stuff you've seen or done with uh, any of said dumb assistants? So it's been, you know, just your normal day to day with a lot what I use, you know, talking about having music playing, asking questions. Um, one of my favorite stories was my wife and daughter were outside in the garden. They're digging through things. My wife opens the screen door. She's full of mud and she's pokes her head in. And instead of asking me to look up something or whatever, she goes, hey, Google, what's the proper pH for tomatoes? And it goes, oh, the proper pH is, you know, from here to here. And here's what it likes. And Cool. Shuts the door, goes back out. I'm like, that was actually something helpful. And, you know, but it's, it's one of these things where it's just kind of, you know, saving you some trouble. The one that stands out to me, though, actually was shown yesterday at Google I.O. And they showed a demo of the assistant taking care of an appointment for somebody. So you'd say, hey, Google, schedule a hair appointment for me between 10 and noon uh, on Thursday. And it actually makes a call to a real place. It has the conversation with the person in speech that sounds like a real person. It doesn't sound like a bot anymore. And says, hey, I want to schedule an appointment for a haircut. Okay, what time? Uh, somewhere between 10 and noon. Well, how about 11.15? All right, that will be great. What's the first name? Oh, here's, here's my name. All right, you got that scheduled. It finishes up the call, adds it to your calendar, and you're good. And, like, this was something they actually showed – and it's actually out there. It's um, I want to say it's Project Trouble. Like I said, it was, it was literally just yesterday during the keynote. 
And so it was something that I had not, uh, I had not heard of before. I had not seen about it. Uh, oh, sorry. No, trouble with something else. That's for Android. Uh, duplex okay. is what it's called. And it was just, I'm watching this going, this is insane. Like, that's, yeah, that's, that's like good. next level human interaction and everything that's going on. I'm like, that's, yeah. that's not just like, here's little tasks around the house. Yeah, yeah. And I might, again, you know, talk about slippery slope. That could be something else, but. Well, I, I mean, like you and I getting on this conversation, right? I, had, I use a service called Cal- Calendarly. It's always so hard to say. Um, and, you know, it's configured to understand like how, like what times work for me and my budget. And I give, I give, you know, you the link and you, you figure out where the, the intersection that works for your, your time is. And like, for me, it's magic. Like it ends up on my calendar. I have all the right information. I didn't do anything. And it, I, I love this thing. So to take that like just further and further is fantastic. Yeah. I mean, I think that's one of the, the key pieces with a lot of these assistants is it's going ahead and trying to take day-to-day tasks where doing the task is not the valuable part. It's the end result and simplifying that or completely removing that for you. It's not useful for me to take my phone out of my pocket yeah. and look up the weather, go to my computer and look up the weather. It's, it's simpler for me to say, hey, Google, what's the forecast for today? Oh, you know, da-da-da, and I'll read it off. Yeah. You know, it's, it's simpler for me to say, Alexa, reorder some toilet paper for me. <laughs> now I don't have to go to the store and do that, I, and it's just going to show up. We should have prefaced this entire thing with, like, please turn off your devices. Yes. That is something I've learned through doing yeah. presentations. Yeah. Um, I had one I did for our whole company at Skyline, and we had devices hooked up. I'm like, yeah, with Alexa. She was hooked up to speakers behind me, and all of a sudden yeah. it's like, what do you need? I'm like, oh, God, it's yeah. as loud as possible. So, Pretty yeah. sure you just ordered some people some toilet paper. Yeah, it's all right, guys. Yeah. Quick, quick, uh, quick go back and uh, yeah. undo. Make sure you cancel that. Otherwise, just Bill Clark for it. Yeah, yeah that's so. fine. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. Uh, you know, getting it, getting it smarter. I, I think they play a role. And I, we didn't really talk about the tech in, involved in kind of writing this stuff. I, I think that's, I don't know. I don't want to trivialize it. I think it's pretty easy to to do this. The hard part, which this conversation certainly wasn't focused around, is really designing the voice piece yeah. of things. You know, how to sling the code that listens to a thing and does a thing. Like, it's not difficult. Um, having the idea, extending the context, designing an interaction that works, that's that's really the hard piece in yeah. all of this. And, you know, I've got a I've got a show sitting here, so that's the one with a screen, which I think is like it's a little I don't want to say it's a little big. I think it's almost like the perfect device. Like the screen for me yep. has a lot of benefit that hasn't been realized yet. Like when the doorbell rings. Like it should just automatically show who's at the doorbell. Like I shouldn't have to ask for it to show. Yeah. Um, and and so we're 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 certainly in those days of you know attention deficit disorder and being able to value our time better and use those use those minutes and you know these devices certainly do that. I think so. I mean, it just yeah. There's there's so many options we have out there of just things to do in yeah. every walk of life, and it gets you know. It gets overwhelming at times, and I think that's a lot of what happens. Is just we have too many things to pick from. Right. So it's okay. How do we do a lot of things and shrink down the other time of things that we don't want to be doing? Yeah. But as you touched on, you talk about that, you know, interaction part. It's it's a different style of user interface. Yeah. And that's what we have to think about is somebody else is using this, and their interface is the voice, the conversation yeah. they're having back and forth with this device. Yeah. And trying to model that gets is really, really tricky. Like I've done sessions before on here's how you write something for Alexa and home, the home together or the assistant, I should say. It's, you know, you can get a set of APIs, they call it, they send along the data, you fulfill it, you come back. It's nothing too bad. But trying to get to that point where it makes sense to a wide range of people is a much, much bigger task. Yeah, I, I hadn't really thought about this either, but like the, you know, and I've talked about it a number of times uh, on this, you know, the, we live in a global world. Like there's nothing, it's very easy for us to publish things, apps or sites, or whatever, like across the globe. This is probably one of 
this is probably the hardest thing to do globally. Um, if you think of um, the language, not just the language different, because now you're talking about audio, but like uh, there's subtleties in the language. So like when I worked for, for Telerik and it was, uh, I'd go over the bulk area, they would tell me it doesn't really matter how well you learn um, our language if you do not get the little, um, uh, what are they called? Um, I don't want to say slang, but um, just the it, nuances. It, to yeah, the nuances, see. right? The Idi idiosyncrasies, idiosyncrasies. Right, right. Like it's it's fine. You may learn it, but it, you will know like one, you were not a native Bulgarian. Two, you didn't quite use it right. So now you take that same thing as an outsider and then try to say publish my alexa skill to bulgaria yeah. like eh, you may not be anywhere near as successful as you think you might be without I mean, having think, like native I don't know, native help i guess yeah well I, I mean i think trying to go and make sure you understand the different nuances and the different little bits of language just in english in yeah. even if you just want to keep it within the u.s how somebody's going to speak in the yeah. Midwest versus the yeah, South yeah. versus out West yeah. versus New York. I mean, yeah. there's going to be not just the accents, but just different phrases they use and different ways they, they speak yeah. that you have to account for. And yeah. what's the efficient way to do that? You know, some of these tools can help with that. Uh, you know, the, the Alexa services they have, dialogue flow on the Google side, like they've got pieces they can handle with that to, to understand what's going on. But you still need to account for different ways people could say something that Oh, it actually means this for me. Right. Like right. for what I'm doing, this is actually what's relevant here. Right. Yeah. There's a, that's a, like a super fine line of, you know, it working versus being a disaster yep. because there's no, there's no like, all right, you go to a website and then you can kind of infer because you're a human and you can draw that link together. But if you're talking to something and it doesn't understand, you're going to go try once, twice, ah, I'm out. Like, yep. Doesn't work for me. Moving on. I had that scenario. I've, I've written well, a couple of assistants, but one in particular I had published out. And it was a it was a very, very important assistant, very critical to what we're doing day to day. It will give you custard flavors for the area I live in yeah. so you can get frozen custard info. Sure. You know, super important. Totally. And so I'm like, I got everything written. I'm like, this makes sense. It's only really like five different commands. And one of my coworkers is like, hey, it doesn't work. I'm like what? He's like, he comes up, he's like, Tell me the flavors. Well, you have to specify where you're – oh, crud. I'm like, I'm so used to this and how I interact with it and how what makes sense yeah. to me. Yeah, I get voice one design. person in here. It's like, well, yeah. try this again. Let's see what's going on. Yeah, yeah. See if back they're understanding the, what it means. Yeah, back to the drawing board. Yep. I'll just do it all over again. Yeah, very cool. Um, all right, at the uh, at the end of every one of these, I like to acknowledge the other person. And with that being said, I want to acknowledge you for not just being here today, but – um, you have actually been somebody who's spoken on this very topic uh, quite a bit over the years. And um, brave new world, a lot to be learned and a lot to be shared. And, uh, you know, thank you for taking taking the time to share your journey in this uh, voice assistant world, if that's really how you would yeah. categorize it. I don't I know. It's, it's, it's hard to specify exactly what it is. It's just like – It is. This AI thing that's going on, you can talk to it in some places, and yeah, yeah, I it's like just continuing I, to change. I hate calling them assistants because I don't necessarily feel like they're ever assisting me yet. Maybe I mean, granted, there and yeah, whatever. I don't feel like they're very so, smart at times either. But no, yeah, that sometimes better than others for sure. Right. Quick, quick question for you then: What would you see would be useful to make to make it more of an assistant? What would help you more? Mm from your day to day to say, okay, this is actually something that is benefiting me in a very tangible way. Ah, that's a, that's a great question. I think for me, um, for me, it is, it is aug augmenting tasks that I have. Um, yep. and, and I don't mean like I need to go order toilet paper, but I mean things like, um, my calendar, uh, the phone is pretty good at this, right? Hey, you know that I'm going here. I have, I, all right, I have to take my kid to soccer at 5 p.m. He's got to be there by 5. It's a half hour drive. You need to be aware of the local traffic. You need to know where I'm at. 
aka like my show can see me um, it knows yep. that there's it doesn't necessarily know that it's me but it knows that there's somebody in front of it if it was more contextual aware of my calendar it should be able to infer that in fact is you know i am here in front of my desk yep. um it if it knew that i was on a call like preemptively tell me that traffic is bad and it's going to rain and thus i need to leave 15 minutes earlier or yep. Or preemptively remind me that um, I, I think of like that psychic bag that that just baggage of things like I've got to do a thing it's been did I have the dentist appointment and all that and a lot of that just drives from the calendar so if you could do more interesting stuff from the calendar or if I use yeah. the calendar more then you could tell me that I needed more toilet paper um, I, so that's where the assistant piece comes in, like somebody actually telling me, like, you got you got 500 emails last night. I've recategorized, you know, 20 of them. These are the top 20 I think you should know. Let me read them yeah. to you, right? Like, that's but, that's helpful. How to order, like, one-click buy on Amazon? Like, it's not uh, bad, but it's not critical. It's not right. saving you a ton of time. Right, right. I mean, I think... I think the big key with that is you want something, and I think we all do, and it's the harder way to do this, is create assistants that are more proactive than just reactive. Yeah. It's not us telling them what to do. It's, hey, right. I saw this. I want you to do this. Right. Which, yes. again, gets into a very fine line of having enough info and doing it in a way where people are like, this is really helpful, as opposed yep. to, this is creepy. How did you know this? Right. How yep. did you get this information? How do you know this about me that – you, you're able to recommend something in this way. Right, uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll take it a step further, and this is actually something that I think, I'm, I'm surprised still doesn't really work today. So we use an app called AnyList, it's our family thing. AnyList is a, for those who don't know, like go immediately buy this thing. Um, it is, um, as it sounds, you can create lists. More importantly, what we use it for is we have all of our family recipes in there. So anytime we find a recipe, we have, uh, there's a recipe section, it's all in there. The important piece about that is in the recipe section, we can then schedule out like what we want to eat um, for a given week. Okay, don't really need any list to do that for me. What I do need any list to do is all those ingredients, put them in a yes. list that is contextually aware of where I'm going, which it does. So I can say, I wanna have, uh, I don't know, pizza and whatever, whatever this homemade pizza is. And it, I can have it go put all the ingredients in my grocery list and even like GPS, you know, like locate this thing in my wife's phone and my phone. Everybody's all in sync and she's buying it and she's clicking this stuff off the list and things are disappearing and whatnot. They did add a, what are they actually? They skill, an Alexa skill, so that I could say, go add the uh, tarragon to my to my grocery list and the Alexa will say, oh, you want a tarragon and it'll throw it in your grocery list in any list. Great, yep. but here's the thing that's missing, which is which is mind boggling for me. So if I have an Alexa show or anyone, why can't the damn thing help me with the recipe? Like, so to your, like of all the things where I, my hands are dirty, I'm making the thing, why can't you tell me like what the next thing is? And we've seen some of these happen like with yeah. Cortan in the past, but none of them have been very like it's like it's like the person who designed it never cooked. I I I want to make pizza. Great. Here here's the ten things you need to get out of the out of the thing. Tell me one. Don't tell me all ten. Tell me one so I can grab the one and I can tell you next and show show me a picture on the screen and whatever. Like give me the measurement stuff. Walk me through. None yeah. of it does it. Like, and I don't even I think know, it's that hard. It seems like that should be a straightforward thing. I know that the the Google Assistant has tie-ins. I don't know if it's just with all recipes or different things like that. But I know they have ways you can say, send this recipe to the home. It'll tell you a step and then say, all right, next. Okay, next. And I think that that's something that's at least partway there. Yeah. I like the idea, though, about having the show where it's, Here's my step. You can actually look at it mm -hmm. without having to touch anything. Go and you know muck up your iPad with your hands that are full of you know chicken goo, right? And you can just take care of it that way. Yeah. But it's like that feels like yeah, it does feel like one of those things where that shouldn't be far away. Yeah. 
again, it's back to that kind of whole 360 degrees of who you are, right? Yep. I, I need to cook. I need to do it this time. I got soccer practice. Like, tie the world together and actually be an assistant. God bless. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, that's what it gets down to. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for spending your time with us today. I appreciate that. We appreciate that. I am super, super curious uh, if you have an Alexa or a Google or a HomePod, if you have a HomePod. <laughs> well, sure, it sounds great, but I don't know. Uh, but leave us a comment. I'd be curious, like, what's your favorite skill? What have you found the most useful? Creepy, yeah. not creepy? Do you have one of those... Uh, Alexa bolt-on devices or in your car. I'd be curious how some of them work. Um, but drop us a comment. Uh, Fozzie and I, I'd love to, to interact and see it. One day, we'll get the that conference skill out the door. That is being sort of worked on. It was supposed to be- I have part of one from stuff. last year. <laughs> I, I, I was supposed to have it already done, but busy. We can chat. Such is, such is life, just yep. busy. Uh, so thank you. Thank you, Fazio, for being here today. And we will see everybody next time. Thank you.